So for those of you who frequent my channel, you know I do a lot of prospector mining and I thought I would take this time to kind of just dirt under your fingernails, just walk you through what a mining night looks like. So I'm doing a bit of pre-flight here. Look, uh, don't have a whole lot here. You, you're gonna go with an Atlas drive. That's gonna be my recommendation uh, for an all-arounder. Of course, a uh, uh, shout out to the VK00 as well. Um, you know, for short range jumps. Here I have two VAUX C3s and one Rieger C3. Now, different people go with a lot of different things. You can absolutely go with a couple of Brants and an FLTR XL. You could go with some Surges or some Stampedes. I'm gonna be working here specifically at the Aaron Halo. With the Aaron Halo, the biggest rock you're ever gonna run into is a 5122 mass. Um, it's an arbitrary number. Uh, and so we're not gonna need that big rock breaking meta so we're going to just really walk you through um, everything that has to do with one run for quantanium mining so hit the elevators i'm coming out here to the prospector um, and we're going to climb aboard and we're going to do some more pre-flight stuff so up to this point we did a little bit of a pre-flight we double checked that our quantum drive was on board it was an atlas drive uh, we did have the va uxc threes and a rieger where our three modules those are all passive modules um, you know, we talked about some some other different ways that you could get yourself out. Um, even if you wanted to just have a lancet and all brants, it would be fine. But here we are, we're climbing aboard um, the prospector, and uh, into the seat we go. And the prospector is my favorite ship in the game, and this is the way that I plan on making money pretty much right away. Uh, I'm going to be purchasing a lancet, some brants, and getting started. And and I could see myself basically heading to the Aaron Halo. A bunch. So here I kind of turn on the engines. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the um, the power on the ship. I'm going to do a, a, once again a little bit of a pre-flight to make sure that everything looks good, uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and call to open the door. But prior, you know, to that, I do like to sometimes open up the laser and make sure that I can see all of my uh, consumables or my you know my passives or my mining modules or my gadgets. Those types of things I like to make sure so you can see the VAUXC3, VAUXC3, and the Rieger are all there on the left hand side of the of the UI and just double checking that all that stuff is there. Once you've done that, then you can go ahead and just put that away. Once again, call for the doors here and uh, and head out. So we're gonna be heading to the Aaron Halo. And I'm gonna be just narrating through this as we go. Lots of times I do um live stream these types of uh events but i thought tonight it would be a little bit fun to kind of give some for like a 1440p you know uh just a just a same kind of thing that i normally live stream but just to walk kind of talk you through it as uh as it's kind of happening here as i'm recording so we're gonna head out now um and i am going to pull up the star map here in just a second and here we're at CRUL1. So here from CRUL1, what we are going to do when we pull up the star map is we're going to look for Arc L3. Thank you. And please visit again. We're going to set a route towards Arc L3. And once we set that route towards Arc L3, then we are going to go into Quantum. And we are going to head on over uh you know, towards Arc L3, but we're gonna drop out at 11.4. So, you know, as you begin, you know, as I'm kind of clearing the station here, you can see I'm spooling up, and I am now um, aligning towards Arc L3. Uh, you know, we're about to just kind of punch out. So, um, I've, you know, I, you know, set the calibration, I let it spool, and off we go. And so, lots of times. Um, when I do this run, uh, you know, you kind of come out in some different areas. I like to, I like to actually drop out somewhere around 11.5 or 11.4. It's not actually the most thickest part of the bands in the Iron Halo. The Iron Halo has some bands, and and that just for how many rocks there are. I actually like the areas that have less rocks in them, um, and so. 
you know, not it doesn't have to be super sparse, but in this particular case, when I come out of uh, Quantum, it is actually fairly sparse where we land, and it happens to work out just fine. So here we are, as you can see, we're now approaching Arc L3, uh, and the KMs are dropping, you know, 16, you can see 16.5, 16.4, you know, as and so what we're going to do is we're going to actually stop the quantum at 11.4. So we've got a little bit longer to go, and we're going to continue on heading towards Arc L3. And here, you know, in just in just a, a moment, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to turn off the quantum drive. So uh, the same button that you would have used to start quantum. As it gets down to say 11.4, 11.5, that area here, we are going to go ahead and turn off the quantum. So here we are, uh, seven, six, five, four, boom. Now you can see there's not a lot of rocks out there, but there's still some. So that's kind of where we're at. Now, the one thing that I like to do in some parts of the Air and Halo is immediately set refinery that I'm going to be heading back to, I like to set that right away. But in this particular part of the Iron Halo, that actually means that you're facing the sun. So when you're doing the CRUL1 to Arc L3, I actually recommend that you flip back over in this particular case and you just keep, you just keep Arc L3 as your destination that way as you begin kind of doing your scanning you do have the sun to your back but you also do have this marker this quantum marker is uh will kind of keep you heading in one direction so you don't end up flying back over and scanning the same rock so it's really important to understand the scanning meta in the air and halo and this is specifically for solo prospecting so I'm gonna pull the laser out and notice I set the scan angle to 179 degrees. And then I go ahead and collapse the scan angle down to two degrees. And you can see that it's gonna provide me the types. You can see that I can see the type there. Once again, you can see the type. It's on the scan results on the right hand side. So what we're looking for here are Q types. And so we're gonna continue, whenever we don't find Q-types, we're gonna kind of reset. I'm gonna set it back to the 179 scan angle, and I'm gonna go ahead and fire out another ping, and then we're gonna collapse that angle down to two, and we're gonna go ahead and, here, here we go again. You can see that I am pinging. Now in this particular case, the diamond icons aren't necessarily giving me a scan result. I know that is an unscannable rock, so we're just not even gonna bother with it. And there you go, you see a type at that point. And so um, what we are looking for though are Q types. Q types are the quantanium types and they're very important. You know, those are the ones that you're looking for. That's gonna be the most profitable. So if you don't find Q types, if you find M types or P types, you know, or E types, just keep on sailing. Uh, and if you also have a situation where they don't give you um, any kind of scan results keep on sailing. Now, the minute you do find a Q-type, then make sure you move your scan angle to a 90 degree scan and ping a lot. That's gonna keep the opportunity marker on the screen, just like as we're approaching here. And the good news is, is uh, you don't wanna point directly at the opportunity marker. You wanna keep it left or right of center here because you don't wanna run into the rocks, right? You don't wanna just be flying in there and just run into them. Now. We got pretty lucky here. This was actually a quantanium cluster. And so we're gonna come on in here and we're gonna take a look at these, uh, these rocks and see if there's anything worth mining. Now, sometimes there are things worth mining and sometimes there's not. Uh, and just because you found a quantanium cluster, that doesn't mean that there's going to be something to mine in the cluster. And so here we go, I'm approaching some rocks, and in this particular case, that is not going to do it, that's a 2%. And so we're gonna take a look at all these rocks here. Um, and in, you, in order to get this, the final scan results, you do sometimes need to be within 275 meters. 
So, you know, we've located these rocks. I'm trying to go ahead and get the deeper scan results to determine how much quantanium is in these rocks. And, and the different ones are going to have different percentages. But what we're looking for generally is a 40-40. That's a 4,000 mass at around 40%. That's going to be a full 32 SEU of quantanium. This isn't a, a terrible rock here, um, but it's, you know, once again, it, there's, we're not seeing anything that's over 20%. So we're always going to be looking for something that is a, a 4,000 mass around 40%. That's going to be your best barometer. Now, I do recommend taking anything that's going to be anything that's going to be 18 to 20 SCU of quantanium. It's not a bad idea to grab it, and especially in early gameplay. Uh, you know, you could still be looking at, a, you know, 100,000 or whatever in ore sales, even if you don't necessarily do the whole second part of the loop and, and haul it in. Uh, and, and the first couple times you do head out to make money, you, you know, with your prospector, you may, depending on what kind of a financial condition you're in, you may just want to sell the ore sales and not necessarily do the refining jobs and haul them in. Um, but if you have a few extra bucks and you can afford to do the refining, you'll you'll want to for sure. So in that particular case, I found a quantanium cluster, but it didn't have a rock in it that I felt was worth mining. So here we go. We're going to continue on looking around and always returning to the Arc L3 quantum marker, always resetting back to the 179 degree scan angle. You can see always repinging, getting your opportunity markers, and then always collapsing back to the two degrees, leaving the, the mining laser out, repinging, and checking the type. You know, that's what we're looking for is, you know, we're looking for Q types. And, um, you know, sometimes you can get lucky and sometimes you have to be out here for a little while. But in this particular case, uh, you know, you know, I was out here scanning for a little while, but I did I didn't do too bad and as you're, as you're gonna see so um, it is pretty this this once again this band that I'm in uh, in the air and halo is fairly sparse it's probably uh, you know one of the you know one of the initial bands or one of the last bands you know it's definitely not it's not thick with different rocks here there are certainly different parts of the air and halo um, but I do find that these more sparse areas do well you know to be honest with you uh, with this particular meta and then there's you're not really dodging a whole lot of rocks either and that's kind of nice as well so um you know there are lots of opportunities out here and then once again if you happen to hit a q cluster um you know uh you just want to hit go to a 90 degree scan and if you notice here when i when i first did my 90 pings it wasn't the opportunity marker wasn't there trust that it is you know, you have to kind of fly forward a little bit and there, you know, it just kind of reappeared at, with my 90 scan. I could have maybe gone to a different angle and grabbed it, but here we are approaching uh, uh, our second Quantanium cluster. And we've only been out here for 13 minutes. So, you know, in this particular case, this is why the Air and Halo is so effective. Uh, the Air and Halo is going to be incredibly effective uh, in... Um, you know, in 317.2, I've had nothing but great success coming out to the Air and Halo. And we're going to take a look, and that's, you know, there's going to be some nice rocks out here for sure. So right off the bat, you can see with that much red and that thin line of a green, that's probably a nice rock. So I do recommend kind of starting, you know, from one side and or the bottom and working your way up type of thing. That's not a bad rock. This isn't a bad rock here. That is a, that's a real nice rock right there. If you take a look, that's actually a 51.22 at 48.6%. So that's a very, very nice rock. Um, you know, that, that certainly eclipses our 40.40. That rock there is, um, is going to be probably everything we're looking for and then some. Now there was a couple of other rocks here that were, weren't too bad either. And I, and I did take a look at all of them and, uh, you know, for the most part, I do think that uh, whenever you happen to run across such a butte, you know, um, you're just going to want to go ahead and get to work on that thing. You don't, you know, uh, there are what are called working man's clusters where maybe you find a couple of 18 percenters and you do the math and, you know, they're not always going to necessarily break up clean. Now, notice the approach angle is fairly important here as well. 
You know, and one of the things that I actually am doing here is, and I have seen these a couple of times now, more often in 317.2. But if you take a look here, I am kind of, kind of orientating myself. I do like it where uh, you can kind of keep the, the light part of the, um, the UI, you know, kind of on the, on the left hand side, the darker part where you have the, um, the laser intensity where you have your, your kind of your optimal window. I like to keep that in the green more, but I am going to show you here something that I've seen on more and more rocks in 317.2. And that is these kind of, um, hand mineable nests. Like that's an interesting thing right there. That's actually some dolivine. Uh, I believe it's green hue, you know, in the in one of, like a little kind of lesion or whatever, or just kind of a a discolored part of the uh, quantanium rock. And in that, you know, uh, you can actually EVA out and hand mine those if you want. Um, I don't necessarily know that it's going to be terribly a terribly efficient thing to do, but I am going to look at those quite a bit because. You know, maybe someday something's going to show up in those that's not hadonite, uh, aphorite, or dolivine. So, you know, it's an important thing. And so, you know, I was kind of looking at this thing and actually grabbing a couple screenshots and communicating with a, a friend or two to, to mention to them that, hey, I've found another one of these things. Uh, they're, they're, they're becoming a little more common in 317.2 than I recall them ever being um, in, uh, in previous versions. And I mean, I've looked at. It's must, it can't be an exaggeration to say I've mined hundreds and hundreds of quantanium rocks. And I have not seen, you know, uh, these particular things on rocks that often before. So one of those things where eventually, though, uh, you know, I know for the sake of efficiency, I do need to kind of pivot around. Now, I'm fairly close to other rocks. I can see that I'm 60 meters away. So you definitely want to have some... Uh, some situational awareness, some attention to detail, and make sure that you're not just crashing into things. So I'm, I'm lining up. I go ahead and fire up the mining laser. I am going to want to get into a good optimal range here, and we're going to be going working. So, you know, in this particular case, I, once again, I have the VAUXC3s, two of those in a rear. Um, this is a nice rock, though. This is a very nice rock. We're going to go ahead and we're going to break this guy up. And it does take a while. It was a little surprising to me. Um, it did take a while to get uh, to get the charge level up into the green. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, when I, I first kind of put a little bit of energy into it and it fell out, and I was like, hmm, I wonder if this is actually going to be a problem. Now, 51 by, you know, 5122 mass rocks have never been a problem with the Lancet has always been able to do them. And as you'll kind of, the TLDR is we do break this rock as well. So you'll want to kind of hang in there. Now, um, I did eventually have to close within about four meters. So, you know, I was noticing that for whatever reason, when I was going through this here, uh, it did, it, it wasn't, and it probably is very likely because it's such a high percentage of quantanium that it, you can see like it's kind of, falling in and out for a little bit like it's it's almost like hmm, you wonder am i going to be able to build enough energy up into this thing and and uh but i have never ever not been able to break a 51 uh 22 mass rock so i kind of had some faith but what i did decide to do like i said is kind of close in a little a little uh uh you know within kind of four meters or so um you know or got certainly got a little closer here and, uh, and then I started noticing that uh, eventually the charge level did begin to climb. And so this is the nature of things when you have such a nice rock. I mean, this is a, you're not going to find too much nicer rock than this in the air and halo. I mean, there's a, there's a very small percentage of potentially better rocks uh, that might be, you know, in the 49s or 49 pluses, but, you know, maximum mass at 48%. In the air and halo this is a this is a beaut so you know and and you can see it's ta she's taken a little while to to kind of build any kind of energy into it and this is when i decided you know i was gonna go ahead and move in a little closer and and my the lance has never failed me on this mass of a rock so we just kind of have to you know there's a little perseverance that's required in uh in this game and you know, in, in this particular uh, game loop. And so 
uh, that's what we did, a little perseverance. So we began, you know, as we moved real close in, uh, we began to build energy, uh, you know, into the charge level and, uh, and slowly but surely she started to climb up. So this is one of those things where um, it takes a little bit of patience. Uh, there are people who, you know, may have fired a surge by now if they had one on board. You know, I tend to be a little more conservative um, on these approaches. If it takes a little while, it takes a little while. One of the things you have to remember is if you get a full 32 SCU of Quantanium, um, you know, you're looking at 3,200 units. And 3,200 units times 88 is 281,600 um, SCU. Now that's at, a, that's at the full 88, and of course there are some refining costs, and of course there are some um, fuel costs and that type of thing. But you're looking at you know a potential rock here that is definitely in the neighborhood of 270,000 after you pay your refining costs and your so there's a, there's quite a bit of you know more than a quarter of a million AUEC sitting here, so you know a little bit of patience is always you know goes a long ways, and one of the things I can tell you is, um, many times, I talk to people and they don't have the patience that are required, and they end up either blowing themselves up or you know kind of cooking a part of the rock, and and what I do tend to find is is it all works out in the long run. You know, um, we're going to be out here, and I wasn't as efficient as I could have been, but I think the video is somewhere around 45 minutes long, and we will have, you know, in that 45 minutes, pulled in a quarter of a million. Now, you know, if you go back and watch the video, there were lots of opportunities to trim 30 seconds here or, you know, a minute there, and, you know, there have been lots of times where I've snuck out and in 15 minutes been back. And with a full, you know, load of Quantanium, but it doesn't always happen. So, um, anyways, you know, once again, kind of, it took a little while to build up the energy in this thing, and and uh, and there was a there was kind of a moment where I was like, hmm, I wonder if we're we're gonna do it, but eventually, as you see here, we begin kind of, uh, you know, you know, we start getting up around 50, 60 percent of the, the the laser intensity, and uh, and then she starts kind of spiking up from there. So. Um, we're just going to keep, just keep on yeah, building energy into the rock. Um, and uh, yeah, like I said, it's definitely one of those things that's, it takes a little while to, uh, to kind of, uh, to get it to, to pop up into the green. And, you know, this is, uh, this is one of those times when it was being definitely uh, a little challenging, but um, when you're out here in the air and halo and they only have this particular size mass, the 5122, you know, it's a foregone conclusion. Eventually you're going to break that guy. I have not found one rock in the air and halo with the Lancet that I haven't been able to break. Um, that being said, I do hope someday that there are some very large rocks out here that are, you know, it takes something like the moles, three lasers. You know, give us something that's 13,000 or 15,000 mass or something that would take, you know, like the three lasers in order to break it. And and then in that one rock, you know, have like, you know, somewhere where there might be over 100 SCU in that one rock and uh, and allow the mole to kind of, uh, you know, kind of um, do, you know, kind of meet its purpose or whatever, which is being able to, you know, have a nice mining crew and make enough money in a reasonable amount of time with with uh, with that crew to, to come out here. So, um, yeah, we've kind of uh, you know <laughs> gotten off of the gotten off the subject there for a little bit. But here we go, right? We're starting to finally break up into the optimal, and uh, and so one of the things here you you got to have a little patience because you don't want to overcook the rock. You don't want it to be you know cooked at all if you can avoid it. Uh, my preference would be always to flirt with the bottom of the optimal window as opposed to the top of the overcharge. But that can also mean that you fall out. And when you fall out, sometimes it will all decay away. And so that's what happened here at first. So the next time as I push it up into the, uh, into the optimal, um, I let it kind of build up a little higher into the green before I start kind of scaling it back. Now, that being said, you're going to have your situations where 
uh, there's a lag spikes or it's just going to jump up into the overcharge. And so you have to be, you do have to be vigilant here. This isn't something where you can kind of mail it in. You, you really want to be, you know, keep a close eye on where that charge level is, uh, and keep it, try and keep it in the center of the green. If you can, that's would be my recommendation. But, you know, it is one of those things where, uh, you know, if you take your eye off the ball a little bit, sometimes it can jump up into the red. Um, and there can be occasional lag spikes where it jumps up into the red as well. So, good break. Um, you know, we were able to break that guy. And so the next thing that you want to do is you want to take a look at um, your secondary breaks. And so, really with the secondary breaks, what you should do is probably scan every rock first. Um, learn what percentages are in them. In this particular case, I didn't do that um, because it was such a high percentage and this first rock had like just 20 some in it, I kind of figured, well, you know, the other rocks, there's not gonna be a whole lot of rocks with 20 something in it. The one thing that was though a little surprising about this rock as you'll see as we kind of go through, and the VAUXC3s in the rigger handle this just fine. Like there, I don't. There was no brands I needed to fire. The instabilities were completely manageable with this rock. But one of the things I will tell you is um, it didn't break as cleanly as you know you would think it, with it being a 48 percenter. I actually ended up having to break down several of these rocks in order to scoop, which is okay, but kind of interesting. I mean, normally you'd have a you know, you might have a tailing piece like this that has 20%, but then you'd have several other pieces that have 100%. But that wasn't the case here in this particular, uh, you know, I, you know, I happen to notice, but you kind of focus in on this, you know, first guy here. Um, you, you know, once again, you, you, these smaller pieces aren't going to take nearly as much laser power. You know, you're going to be somewhere, you know, somewhere down, you know, somewhere between zero and 20% usually. Sometimes they'll up a little bit higher, but you can see sometimes it will jump up into the overcharge. You just have to, you know, don't panic. If you have to kill the laser, kill the laser. If you can kind of roll back, roll back. Um, there's a, there's a, kind of the first break there. Now here I start kind of looking around expecting to see more 100 percenters, but that was not a 100 percenter there. So, you know, we just kind of going through and dealing with our secondary breaks um and making sure that uh we're getting them broke as clean as possible it's really important really important to try and not overcook these um you don't you don't want them breaking um up into the red that much you'll you'll significantly damage your um your yield if you blow some of these rocks up in the red they'll just they'll it'll evaporate all of the quantanium that's in them so You've got to be pretty careful, but that being said, it's not it's not like it's a super big rodeo or anything where it's it's bouncing around a lot. The VAUXC threes do a really good job here at, at kind of uh, you know keeping the instability in check, even though that there's a fairly high percentage of you know quantanium in this. It's it's not it's not a bad uh, you know not a bad situation, but it is one that you can see it's uh, volatile enough where it's jumping kind of in and out and. And it did fall out for a minute, and I had to kind of push it back up there to, to get it to to uh, um, get back into the green window and to, f and to finish the break. So, um, yeah, everything's kind of cruising along here. We're going to just go ahead and, and finish out this break. There it goes, and on to the next one. And like I said, by this time, I was beginning to think to myself, oh, wow, it looks like, wow, I'm going to end up breaking a lot of these. And, and that's exactly what happened. I, You know, I... Uh, it's very unusual when you have a 48 percenter and you end up having to break a whole bunch of different rocks, but that's the way this one worked out. So once again, we're going to build some energy up into this guy. Um, we don't have any brands or any passives uh, or you know our actives that we need to uh, fire. We, we all have all you know all of our um, uh, our mining um, uh, consumables are not consumable. <laughs> You know, they are just the, the passive variety. And so uh, we don't have any kind of active thing that we need to do outside of just keeping a good eye on, on the optimal window. And, and, and you know, there's a, there are situations, like I said, sometimes there are lag spikes and other things where you can get distracted. And things like this can happen. So, you know, it doesn't happen a ton, but I just want to, you know, even the best miners, you know, sometimes we occasionally 
have one where we cooked it a little bit. Now, that one wasn't bad. It just it was just barely into the red and it didn't seem to cause any problems. But I can tell you sometimes if you overcook a rock just a little bit, it can cost you some yield. In this particular case, it really didn't. But uh, you know, it is something you want to be cognizant of as you're out here mining is um is that you have uh you know you, that you that you kind of keep good vigilance on the optimal window uh, one bad slip up here where you really overcook a rock could cost you quite a bit so um, you know let it slide up into the optimal and then of course let it kind of you know prime up into the climb up into the optimal a little bit but don't uh, you know don't let it flirt around constantly with the top of the overcharge you know if you're gonna keep it someplace keep it down where it will fall out and decay out um, that would be my best bet. Of course, you want to try and keep it as, as close to the center uh, of the optimum windows as, as you can. But, you know, flirt with the it falling out. Don't flirt with it overcharging. Uh, and that, that can lead to some damage to your ship. Or, look, once again, occasionally it just it'll blow up and it will just kind of, all the quantanium will go with it. So, you don't want that to happen. So, here you're just kind of taking a look. Here's another rock that needs to be broke. Um, and you can see that here, you know, uh, I just kind of going through all the different rocks that need to be broke. And um, the normal order of operations is you're going to want to, whenever you're going to go have your first break. And whenever you finish first break, the next thing that you're going to want to do is break whatever the lowest percentages of quantanium are first. And the reason that you do that is so in case there's any kind of a decay or any kind of a, you know, um, a situation where the quantanium despawns, you'd rather it have be a lower percentage that despawns first. Now that doesn't happen often, but it can happen occasionally. That's why you do your first break and then you prioritize lowest percentages as the highest percentages for the breaking process. But after the breaking process, what you're going to want to do is prioritize, um, you know, the highest percentages to lowest for scooping. So one of those things. So here I'm beginning to take a look at the different rocks over there. You know, it was kind of, uh, you know, the other rock that I could have mined if I felt like I needed it. And I start looking around here and you want to be fairly discerning with the laser. I've gone into extraction mode and I'm looking for hundred percenters, right? You're looking for the highest percentages. Now we know this rock that I broke up here was only a 20 percenter. So there wasn't going to be all, you know, pures up here, but here, uh, taking a look at this next rock, you can see that's the first hundo and that's what I'm going to begin extracting that. So here it comes on in and, uh, and really, it's important here because there's enough quantanium that you could have a full unicorn or a full 32 SCU run, but not if you're kind of um, a little sloppy with the extraction laser, which I wasn't here. You know, I am making sure I do get the scans and I am making sure that it says 100% before I actually am scanning. You can see right there, I had to go through several and I began to think to myself when I was doing this, like, well, this is odd. I mean, this, you know, half this rock was... 48% of it out of the 5,000 was, you know, quantanium. It's like, man, there's got to be a lot more hundos in here. But eventually I do begin finding them. So, um, you know, and so this is what I like to um, refer to as being discerning on the laser. It's very important to be discerning on the laser. Letting your scans finish. There's plenty of time here. I know that with quantanium mining, it can seem like there's not plenty of time, but there absolutely is plenty of time. Uh, and you want to scoop all of the hundred or the highest percentages up first. And once you've done that, then you want to pri prioritize the highest percentages. Now, in this particular case, um, I'm only finding hundreds and that's what you, really you're looking for. And what's given me that opportunity was the fact that it was a 5122 mass rock at 48 point six percent so um you know that that right there is gonna be uh an, a, a very very large amount of quantanium and so there's always an opportunity that it's gonna have broken clean enough so i am for sure just looking around uh you know scanning rocks and if they say 100 percent, i'm scooping them up and that's really the gig here you know so far i mean we've kind of come out we did some scanning we looked around we found a couple of uh, quantanium clusters. The second one contained 
a very, very nice rock. And we're just kind of doing a, doing a work here, just trying to, to get that guy extracted. So I'm looking around here to see if I see any other um, 100 percenters. And you can see I've had to look over quite a bit of the rock in order to find uh, you know all the hundos, but there you know there, there's plenty of them on board, and and uh, and what you know really what you're trying to do is is get as much quantanium on board as possible. So that's why you want to prioritize when you go scooping the highest percentages first. But eventually, you can see here I get to a full hundred or 32 SCU. Of quantanium, I do go ahead and reset because if you recall, I I said arc L3. I go ahead and reset my um, my quantum to go back towards um, CRUL1. CRUL1 has an awesome three percent quantanium bonus that'll essentially almost offset all of your refining yield hit that for for the processing for. Um, turning it into refined quantanium. So I am getting, making sure that I'm getting myself steering clear of the cluster so when I spool up uh, and punch it that I don't hit any snags with that and we're gonna head back to CRUL1. Notice that we're about 7 million away, 7.1, maybe close to 7.2. That's not a bad place to be. Uh, the Atlas Drive is plenty fast enough to get us back. And you know, to the TLDR is here is I didn't hear first alarm till we almost landed. And so we're gonna cruise on back, and I am gonna just talk you through the rest of the game loop, which is um, putting this low, you know, carrying this load into CRUL1, taking it down to the refiner, and uh, and making sure that you're turning into a, you know, turning it into, into profit. So here we go. Now, just because that we have, you know, you know, left CRUL1 successfully, came out to the halo located some really good quantanium to mine and uh, and we're on our way back with that quantanium uh, a full 32 seu unicorn run that doesn't necessarily mean that our work's done right it's one of the things i say in the stream a lot our work's not done we've got to come out of quantum we've got to go into second quantum uh, and once we've come out of second quantum, then we still have to approach the station. We have to land and put the, you know, put the uh, landing gear down softly. Uh, you know, if you slam into the pad, sometimes that can send, set the, uh, the um, quantanium into a volatile state and it will go up. It'll turn to inert before you even have a chance to, to store. So you're not, your work's not done when you are, you know, heading back. You've still got a little work to do. So. We're just now getting to the point where we're gonna come out of first quantum. And I've been noticing that the way that they have the quantum markers now, you actually have to double click on the area and then locate the station and click on it and hit set. But I am noticing quite a bit with 317.2 that I do have to re-spool. And I'll show you what I mean here. So we're gonna come out of quantum uh, here in just a second, but we're still going to be a little ways from CRUL1. So we're just cruising on in, and um, we're 100,000 away, and uh, it's about to come out of uh, first quantum. And, and when uh, it comes out of first quantum here, I'm going to immediately begin, begin spooling up to, uh, to go to CRUL1, but it you know, and there's this little cool down here, you know, for the Atlas Drive, but notice how fast that is. Notice how quickly she spools back up, but notice I I hit the drive, but it didn't, you know, it didn't take off. So you, I have noticed you have to spool a couple of times for whatever reason, usually, when you come out of first quantum. So be prepared to do that. But this is no big deal. The second quantum is going to take us in within 20, 25 of the station. And we're in good shape at that point. We've just got to kind of haul it in call for landing, get this thing down safely on a pad, and then take it downstairs. So full 32 SCU unicorn run of Quantanium on board. Um, and right now we're looking at about, you know, almost 40 minutes. Now, um, you know, I think if you were to go back and take a look at this video, you would see that there's lots of other opportunities to shave time um, here and there to where you probably could have got this down um, to a much you know more reasonable clip. That being said, 
the lion's share of your time is going to be locating the quantanium. So getting yourself familiar with those scanning mechanics, making sure you understand that you start by taking out your mining laser, setting the scan angle to 179, pinging out, active pinging, getting your opportunity markers, then closing the scan angle down to two degrees and, and pinging again with the mining laser out and getting the types, M type, E type, P type, S type. You know, you don't see S type so much where I was at in the halo, which you see lots of M's, lots of E's, lots of P types are there. And then, but what you're really looking for is that Q type. So we are um, just now um, getting real close. You know, we've called for the landing. We're approach, approaching the station. And uh, and as we approach the station here and we get close and, and I, you notice I'm not hurrying. You don't need to hurry. Um, you haven't even heard first alarm quite yet. Uh, first alarm is, is going to be uh, it's, you know, it's something that will get your attention, but you know you still have plenty of time. And so as we approach, you know, we're on approach here with the, uh, with the station CRUL1, and they are going to put you in these hangars nowadays. Uh, it is one of the differences between 3, um, you know, 17 and 317.2 is that you do have the small size hangars now. There's not as much landing on the pads. And so here we are, we're approaching, uh, you know, um, our, our hangar that has been provided to us by, uh, you know, by the ATC services. And um, there's first alarm. First alarm went off and but we know we're in really, really, really good shape. We just heard first alarm, we're already inside the hangar. Now it's important not to bang the ship down hard here. You wanna just kinda, you know, really just kinda take your time, do a nice kiss down landing, just boom, just like that. Really simple. Uh, then you wanna go ahead and do your post and then kill your engines. Uh, that's one of my favorite things to do is just go ahead and turn the engines off, back out of your chair and out you go. So uh, a lot of the work's been done here already, right? We've went out, we've gotten the 32 SCU Unicorn run of Quantanium, and now we're headed, you know, we're, we're already back down on CRUL1, and we're headed down. And now the next order of business is to store the ship. So down the ladder I go. Uh, first alarm has not been going off very long, so we know we're in really good shape. And uh, we are going to head on down to the lobby and we are going to store the prospector. Storing the prospector stops the quantanium timer. And it is an important thing to do, stopping that quantanium timer, uh, because um, you know you don't have a finite amount of time that you can actually um, take the quantanium and haul it. So I'm gonna store the prospector. That's, Welcome like I said, when you first kind of get down here, system. that's that's your first order of business. We'll get that guy stored. And uh, and the good news is, you know, occasionally, I will tell you, you'll go to store and it won't store or those types of things. Just make sure if you have to go back up there and, and get, get into the ship and fly out of the hangar again for a second, always remember that if for some reason you have to jettison the cargo, you know, and jettison only works if it is spontaneous and you don't want to do it if you don't have to. But if you ever find yourself in a state, it is just left alt and J. Um, I think you have to have the mining laser out. I may be wrong about that, but I can tell you that that will actually jettison the cargo, and uh, and you know can can save your bacon if for some reason you're you're beginning to run out of time. So down to the refiner I go, and we're going to run this in. And there's a couple of different refining processes that I recommend. The first one that I recommend is going to be the Dynex Solvination. Uh, it's D-I-N-Y-X. The Dynex Solvination is um, what, the one that it costs the least amount. You get the highest yield, um, but it takes the longest. Hey, again, and so you can see here as I kind of approach and I begin like. and I go ahead and I choose the Miss Prospector and I go to set up my work order and I go down and I choose the Dynex Solvination and uh, turn on the full 32 SCU and get a quote, you can see that this is actually going to be 
one day 18 hours but I don't mind that like it doesn't bother me at all the one day 18 hours so once again this is a very very lucrative amount of quantanium um, it's 281,600 AUEC worth um, and we're back at the ranch in you know 45 minutes so uh, not a bad run so you know I just wanted to take a moment and say thank you very much for hanging out with me I hope that you're doing well I hope that this video serves you well and I will see you all around the verse